Hi everyone, Father Scott Vanderveer here with a reflection from our Rebuilt Faith series. Today, looking at giving. God is completely generous and God cannot be outdone in generosity. The best way for us to show that we believe that, to offer trust in God, that God will provide for all that we need, the best way to do it is to give generously. To give, uh, the Bible would say, 10% of our income off the top. Not the net, but the gross. Take 10%, the first 10%, what we call in the Bible, the first fruits. The first fruits get brought to the temple. The 90% of fruits you keep yourself. A lot of people say, I can't do that. I can't possibly give up 10% of my income. I, how could I live on that? But another way to look at it is living on 90% of your income. Could you imagine that? Living on nine tenths of your income? That's a lot. Giving nine out of every $10 to yourself and to your needs and giving one out of every $10 to God and to those in need, somehow that doesn't seem unreasonable, does it? Living, not on our whole income, but living on a part of our income is one of the ways we demonstrate holiness. A lot of people would say, you know, I, I just think I've got kids to provide for. I've got, I've got mouths to feed. I'm not like you, Father. You know, you don't have any dependents. And so it's easy for you to read this book and then, and then talk about it. And the two things I would say is that giving isn't, isn't easy for any of us. All of us deal with the same fears and the same scarcity. But I will say this, that there is a way of living that offers total trust in God that people in our generation are not accustomed to. People in our generation often believe that we need to control the outcomes of everything, to plan effectively so that life doesn't throw us any surprises, uh, give us any curveballs. A lot of us believe that it is our own planning, our own good stewardship of, of our own resources that, that allows us to know that all shall be well. But we know that earlier generations didn't see it that way. Earlier generations put extraordinary trust in God to provide for them. And in doing so, I would like to say that I think they dared God to take care of them. Here's what I mean. My great grandparents came from Poland in 1901 to America. Władysław and Josefka Czarnecki. They came with three kids and then they wound up having nine more when they got to America. There are a lot of Polish traditions that happen in Polish households. Like Polish mothers in the old way used to always have a little ritual they would have with their children before they went to school. And they would say, go with God, my children. And the children would say back, stay with God, mother. And then when they would come back at the end of the day, they would come in the door and say, glory be to God. And the mother would say, who rules heaven and earth. Beautiful little rituals like that. One of them was that whenever my great grandmother, Josefka, would find out that she was having another baby, they would call all of the children together for dinner that night. And she and Władysław, my great grandfather, would announce to the children that there was going to be a new mouth at their table and that God was inviting another child into their family. And then, Josefka would look up at the sky and say to God in front of her children, if you're going to give another mouth at our table, we ask you to give more soup in our pot. That was what they did. More, more mouths at our table means more soup in our pot. And that is exactly how Josefka and Władysław lived, believing that God would put whatever they needed into their pot. Today's families often don't have that same relationship with trust. 
what I think you would agree is that most of us think that we're in charge of planning our families, deciding how big our family size should be. And, and they didn't do that. They allowed God to decide how big their family would be. It sounds idealistic, doesn't it? But I don't think I would be here today if it didn't work. All of us are here because of the sacrifices of our ancestors. So how accurate is it that that's a dangerous way to live, that that can't possibly work, that that's reckless? Maybe it's not. Maybe we see through the generosity of giving, like the kind of generosity we're being challenged to in the scriptures, we realize maybe it's all about trust. In fact, I think you could say that Wadiswaf and Josefka were daring God whenever they had that conversation with God in front of their children. They're saying, you know what, God? You've promised that no one would outdo you in generosity. Well, we're here as contenders in that contest. We're going to try to be more generous than you are. And we trust that because you will not be outdone, Lord God Almighty, you will put us to shame. You will be so generous that we will rue the day we thought we could beat you. We thought by having 12 children on an immigrant salary that we could outdo you in bravery and generosity. But no, no, you're going to outdo us because you're going to make sure that there's enough soup in our pot for all the kids we have and more. And my grandmother would have said that. She said, we didn't have a lot of luxuries, but we never went without food. And all of us looked up to our parents with great reverence. When we dare God to show just how generous heaven can be, we give beyond what we think we could comfortably do and find that God truly will not be outdone, that God will meet our challenge and raise it. One of the things we find is in church circles, when people start giving at a percentage level, they never go back. People who give 10% of their income away never say, I need to stop doing that now. I've I've never heard of somebody doing that. And the reason why is because when your income goes down, your giving goes down. It's always a percentage. Now it is fair to say that giving a, a percentage of a smaller amount maybe does feel harder. If you only have $10, giving away $1 feels harder than if you have $10 million and you give away a million. I think we could all agree with that if we really think about it. However, let's acknowledge that giving at a high level, like 10%, feels so good. People don't want to stop. Just because they're having a hard time doesn't mean they want to feel worse. They want to continue to feel good. And they know that the best way to turn around a difficult situation is to place more trust in God and to be able to let God show just what bounty looks like. Thank you for being willing to engage with topics of such importance, like how we spend our money. And by being willing to, to deal with the uncomfortable feelings that come with asking ourselves how we're doing with our giving, how generous we're possibly being. One thing we know is that God cannot be outdone. And so it is a very safe bet to wager with God, knowing that if we try to outdo God, God will put us to shame in the very best, most generous way imaginable. May God bless you all.